Welcome back. I'm Kerry Rogers. Thanks for joining me today. First, I want to address something. Some people say, Kerry, I can't do what you do. I don't have the talent. Well, that's baloney. Because talent is just interest pursued. Now this week, we're going to look at a slow mailbox move. And to do that, we're going to use the almighty Wireshark to look at the happy little packet. Here they are, all those little packets. You can scroll and scroll and, oh, there's an act. Let's get into it. Hey there, Carrie here with Packabomb.com. I know you are insanely jealous of my amazing afro. Well, I was born with it. And I'm sorry if you weren't. Um, you know, it's a funny thing that Bob Ross actually did not have curly hair. He got a perm. And it, he became so popular that, and that became like his thing that he was stuck with it. So I don't know. Let that be a lesson to you, I guess. So, all right, here we go, guys. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about today TCP performance application performance and how to tell when, what, which one is the one that's biting you in the ass. So we talk a lot about TCP performance here on Packet Bomb. Uh, we're going to dive a little bit into application protocol analysis, especially for something you don't really understand what it is and just trying to gather enough clues to maybe figure something out. So in this particular case, we have uh, mail being migrated from one exchange server to another, and it was taking forever. And during the process of this multi-hour data migration, a capture was taken a few minutes, uh, so it's in the middle. We don't have the three-way handshake, naughty, naughty, but, you know, whatever. Let's see if we can figure out something that's going on. So when I'm looking at performance, the thing I like to do is find um, a packet from the sending side. So this is, you know, one exchange server sending to another, and uh, you should, you know, know your IPs or whatever, but you can quickly look and see like a TCP length and you see a bunch of zeros. Those are probably the acts and the ones that are 1460, you know, full, full TCP MSS are probably the ones from the sending side. Click on statistics, TCP stream graph and TCP trace. So here we have our uh, TCP trace stream graph. And you can see we've got about around three minutes of data up and to the right. And we got lots of little flat spots in here, which I don't like a bit. So let's zoom in. And we have this is data being sent all in one shot. Boom, fast. And then nothing. Flat spot means nothing. And then boom, more data. So let's not do that. Let's zoom in. Uh, on some data right after one of these flat spots, click on the packet, go to that point in the capture, and see what the hell's going on. So, um, we see some application stuff, request responses. We see this 1.2 second delay, which is forever. So first, let's 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 look at the the TCP layer. What's going on in terms of the data transfer? So let's let's just look at this request. This is from the client to the server, and we're sending 188 bytes. His acknowledgement number, or he's acking the previous data from the server, is in 2213. So if we go up and we find this packet, which has the next sequence number of 2213, so the act number means I have received the data up to and including 2212, and the next sequence number I expect from you is 2213. So that tells me that this ACK number is ACKing this packet. So in the server sending to the client side, we're all caught up. There's no outstanding data. Now let's look at the client server. So the client sends this data, his ACK um, 188 bytes. The server acknowledges this packet with uh, 14853 is his act number, which matches this next sequence number. And if you skip down here, the next packet from the client is, in fact, 14853. So we have looked at sequence numbers in both directions, client to server, 
servant client, we're all caught up. There's no outstanding data. TCP's not waiting on data to come in or anything like that. There's nothing outstanding. So what, where, where does this delay come from? So if we, if we turn our attention to the application protocol, and in this case, we're talking about RPC. And we look at this data down here. Uh, the, if we span the, whoops, the RPC part of it, we can see that it has, the auth level is packet privacy, which is like the highest level. This is encrypted RPC. Expand this part, see some Kerberos stuff. So we can't really see what's happening with MAPI. So MAPI is the, the protocol that's, that Outlook and Exchange uses, and RPC wraps around it. So we're left looking at the basic stuff about RPC. Um, so we have a request. We have an ACK from the server. This is TCP. All it's saying is, yeah, I got your data. I don't know what it is. Don't care. I got it. I gave it to the, to the application. And now I'm waiting on something to happen. And then something does happen. 1.2 seconds later. So let's do a filter. DC, DCE RPC. And have a look at what this kind of looks like. So we have a request. There's a call ID, 44296. There's a fragment, single. Opnum 4, I don't really know what that is, but call ID, okay, that makes sense. If you look right above it, it's, you know, 44295, now it's 44296, all right, makes sense. Where, you know, each, probably each request increments the call ID by one. Fragment, you know, is this particular request part of a fragment or not? It says single, probably not. So here comes the response, matches the call ID. This is the first fragment. And then the, the ones with the same call ID have fragment of mid. So there's several of those. And then there's one with last. And then we have another request where we have incremented the call ID. So what this smells like to me is when these Microsoft chatty application protocols want to transfer files that go, hey, I want this you know, 10 gig file. Now give it to me in 64K chunks. Here comes the first one, 64K, give it to me. Okay, I got it. Now I want the second 64K. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So there's like this overlay of inefficiency built into the protocol. Now, I don't know if that's what's happening here. That's what it smells like to me. You know, FTP, when you transfer a file, FTP just gets out of the way. It's like, give me a file, great, here you go. And it just sends all the data. But these application protocols are chatty, they take a lot more turns across the WAN, so when you have latency, it kills performance. All that said, something else is going on here. When you have, let's take away the, uh, the client has issued a request. Let's just say you know, it wants the next chunk of data. The server's TCP says, yep, got it. I'm just waiting on... I'm waiting on the software to give it to me. And it takes a second for it to come in. Once it starts coming in, generally it moves in pretty quick. We can see our pattern of data, data, ACK, data, data, ACK, which is what you would expect to see on the client side, sometimes three. And then we get down to the end. We're like, okay, we sent that chunk. Now we're gonna, this, the client asks for another chunk of data. And then yet again, there's a big pause before the server says, okay, here's the data. To me, that is the application being slow. Now, why is the application slow? Well, I don't know. I don't have view into the server. Some things, CPU, memory, what is the disk like? Is it a local disk? Is it attached storage, iSCSI? Fiber, what is it? Is there something going on with the, the storage? Is, is the server busy? Maybe, maybe it's lower than that. Maybe it's a NIC driver issue. Maybe there's some security software, antivirus software on, on the server that needs to scan and look at the data before it lets it out the door. I don't know. But the point is, we know here that when your mail admins say, hey, we got to get this mail migration done before, you know, Sunday at midnight and your network is slow, you take your capture, you look at this, you go, 
in your face. In a yo a face. Because it's very clear from this capture that the network is not an issue. Even TCP is not an issue in terms of needing to fine-tune something. Packet loss is not an issue. But you know what it is an issue? The server taking a hell of a long time to respond to these requests. And there are tons of them because, again, this application protocol is chatty. So I hope that helps. You understand when you're looking at a performance issue, think about it in layers. Think about TCP is just the FedEx driver. It doesn't care what's in the box. And the applications of people who are doing something with, you know, the things you come, they get delivered by Amazon, your Swiffer wet wipes, or I don't know, terrible example. Okay, so remember, so once you are able to do this and say, you know what, look at this application protocol, it's doing this thing. What are my next steps here? Your next steps is to pick up the phone and say, in your face. Oh, there's a corrupt packet. We'll have to send him to Washington. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Join us next time, and from all of us here, happy packet hunting, and God bless.